Star County District Library Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, let's begin uh, with any public comments. Do we have anyone signed in for public comments? No? Regarding my uh, comments as president, I would just like to express uh, on behalf of the board, our sympathies uh, to Mary Ellen uh, for the tragic passing of her father-in-law. You're, you're in our thoughts and prayers, Mary, Mary Ellen. I know it's a very difficult time. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. And again, if there's anything we can do, please let us know. Uh, moving on in the agenda to staff reports, uh, Mary Ellen, please. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with all of you. I'm going to keep my um, my comments brief tonight because Derek and Mark are with us, but I just wanted to share with you some highlights from 2020. Um, we're going to be producing our impact report and we'll get you hard copies of that, but there were just some highlights of it I wanted to bring to your attention. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so prior to COVID, we were doing our in-person programs and we did 1,006 programs, which were attended by 17,575 people across all of our locations. Mobile services made um, 1,234 visits and we had 21,529 people use the bookmobile and we visited 125 schools. We switched to online programming in the summer and we've done programs on Zoom, Facebook and YouTube. Um, we've done 199 programs and we've had 2,100 people attend them and they've been a great way to bridge that gap um, to have some personal interaction with patrons and staff. Um, Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, since we began in the fall of 2019, we've enrolled over 6,200 kids, and that is 30% of all the kids eligible in the for the program who are zero to five. And we have mailed out 33,543 books. Um, for circulation, we um, our patrons borrowed 1.1 million items. Our usage of e-materials skyrocketed. Since March, we were up 18%. Over 561,000 e-materials were borrowed. And um, patrons renewed uh, over 248,000 um, items. And then um, access, that's another big area for us. And um, we provided over 123,000 Wi-Fi sessions. We provided 52,999 computer sessions. We have 315 Wi-Fi hotspots in circulation. And we've also retooled our website. We relaunched our website in July and that increased our usage there. Um, the website became a very popular place for people to visit during the pandemic. So our traffic increased 40% there. So we had 2.1 million page views. Um, our number of visits were 534,000 and um, 215,000 unique visitors visited our website. And then um, we branched out the summer and we did um, summer meals distribution for kids. Um, we worked um, with several partner agencies to do so. We distributed 103 backpacks for kids, almost 4,000 meals for families at four different locations. Um, we have provided one-on-one -on -one services um, and we've had 103 notary service appointments, 1,524 one-on-one book and expert appointments, and we have um, completed 929 passport applications. Um, we've partnered with uh, Education uh, uh, Stark Education Partnership and we lent out 50 Wi-Fi hotspots to families and teachers in need. Uh, we've created deposit collections at all of the Canton City elementary schools, and we have um, made Wi-Fi access available via our bookmobile. So those are just a few highlights of the year. Um, typically on President's Day, we have our staff day, but this year, um, because of the weather, we had to cancel that. Um, but I, I also wanted to share with you, we had over 30 people um, celebrate um, work anniversaries with the library over um, 
a little over 30 people and they celebrated um, years of service from five years to 35 years. So um, it, it was tremendous accomplishment by them. And um, we, we hope to share the good news with the rest of the staff soon. Does anybody have any questions for me? No questions for Mary Ellen? No? Nope. Okay. That was, that was a very, uh, very good report, Mary Ellen. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to, um, I just wanted to mention um, in your report to us, you enclosed a letter from Charles Wakunas. Yes. If I'm pronouncing his name correctly, which was an awesome letter about how he obtained his online degree while using the computers at the library. I think that is just a, a great story. I do too. It, it, it's so nice to hear um, what a difference our resources are making um, to individuals, you know, especially in his case with advancing his education um, so that he can get a job. Is that, I mean, is that something we should share uh, outside of the library? To, to uh, I think that's just, again, it, it speaks to the question of, you know, what is the relevance of a library, you know, in 2021? And I mean, what more relevant than, than having our resources provided this young man, you know, how much more relevant can we be? Mm -hmm. I, I agree. And I will talk with um, Stephanie Cargill on how we can make that happen. Um, I've, I've shared it with you guys and I shared it with staff, but um, I'll, I'll talk with Stephanie to see what other ways we can um, share that story. Okay, yeah. great. I definitely is, thought, great. Steve, I thought so too. I thought it was like a press release. That's pretty, <laughs> pretty cool to um, have somebody that, you know, might not have otherwise been able to advance themselves if it wasn't for the library. So. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's life changing, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Have we, has anybody met, I mean, have you met that man, Mary Ellen? I have not met him, but I understand um, he, he's a patron at the main library. Okay, great, great. Well, that is awesome. Man, thank you for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments or questions for Mary Ellen? Hearing none, we'll uh, move down to Chris's report. Chris, uh, if you would, please. Sure. <clears throat> um, so January uh, was a fairly quiet month um, as far as the general fund goes. Um, we did start seeing some movement in our capital fund, uh, mainly the Reimagine Fund as that project uh, begins to ramp up. We'll see uh, more activity in that in the next couple of months and it'll continue for the next two years. Um, but as far as general fund, uh, we had about $950,000 in expenses in January. That's about 25% of our temporary budget, which was a three, but three month budget. So that's 25% uh, is good. Uh, we only had about 630000 in revenue, which is a little bit less than um, 2019, or excuse me, than 2020. Um, but we did not receive any property tax in January. Um, usually our property tax starts coming in either the very end of January or at some point in February. Um, it just got a little bit late start uh, this year. We started receiving it in February. So we're, we're through February, we're more on track with revenue. Um, the PLF in January was actually up uh, $30,000, and then uh, we actually just received our PLF late last week for February. It was up another $50,000, so we're up um, $82,146 in total so far through the year, which is 6.5%. Um, so that's uh, continuing to go pretty well. Um, there may be, the PLF is something I'm, we're going to be monitoring pretty close this year, uh, because this, with the state budget and the way that works, um, right now it's scheduled so the libraries across the state receive 1.7% of the state's general revenue fund. Um, and in July, that is scheduled to drop from 1.7% to 1.66%. So all of the monthly state revenues, uh, libraries will share a smaller portion um, after July, unless something changes in the budget proposal. Um, so it could impact the PLF by a small amount, um, but for our individual library impact, as long as state revenues hit their targets, we really won't notice a huge change, but it, it will 
impact us to a degree. Um, and it, but it shouldn't impact anything uh, operationally or you know really cause any budget squeezes or, or anything. It's just something to keep an eye on. Um, the last thing, um, there's not yet, I haven't uh, met with the finance committee with the budget proposal. Um, I actually do have that ready. So I'll be reaching out to the finance committee members um, here. I was going to do it this afternoon, but afternoon got away from me. Uh, so I'll be reaching out uh, to everybody, um, trying to find a date uh, that we can meet and um, discuss the budget for 2021. And then the plan is to present that at the upcoming March board meeting. Um, that concludes my report. All right, thank you, Chris. Any, any questions for Chris? No, if not, then uh, we'll move on to the consent calendar. If you've had an opportunity to uh, review the items contained within the consent calendar, I'd ask for a motion to approve. Elden moves. French second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same. Thank you. Uh, Derek and Bob, you'll be giving us a, an update uh, from the Building and Grounds Committee report. And, and also Mark, excuse me, on the Capital Projects update. So gentlemen, go ahead and take it away. Go ahead, Derek. <laughs> All right. Well, um, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Well, I looked at my calendar and it's been a little over three years since I've started with the library now. Um, and it's very exciting for me, as you can imagine then that we are truly um, about ready to get started here with North. Um, we started uh, on the 7th of this month to close the building to the public. Uh, and we started all our alternative services via our bookmobile on the 8th, which was that Monday. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, and over these last week and a half, which we'll uh, finish up at the end of this week, we've been clearing out the building at North. Um, it's a, a very intricate process, but one that's, that's moving along uh, very nicely at this point. Uh, so we can be ready to begin construction next Monday. So that's where, uh, you know, the rubber really meets the road and um, we can truly say we're, we're underway. So uh, I think that's really exciting and something we can all be proud of. And, uh, we hope that that construction should be complete in June and with the goal of reopening in July. So um, lots to be happening between now and then, but just wanted to give you guys a little um, rundown on that, that timeline. Um, if we can go to the next slide, Chris. Thank you. So that's a little snapshot of what's, I guess, not inside anymore. Um, by the end of this week, those materials you see will be gone as well. So uh, very different than what we're used to seeing in terms of the hustle and bustle in that space, as well as the, the furniture and um, uh, technology. Uh, but this is another thing we've, we've prided ourselves in lately is you know, trying to be sustainable and uh, making sure that all of our resources go to the best use. Uh, both Habitat for Humanity Restore and uh, Stockpile, which is another nonprofit in the area, uh, we're able to take just about every piece of furniture uh, that we are not going to be able or need to reuse. Uh, so again, that will be circulated back out to the public when they uh, resell it. Uh, we're also able to recycle uh, pretty much every bit of metal shelving that's uh, in the building that we're not going to reuse. And all of the technology and the, um, the personal computers uh, that we're not reutilizing uh, were donated to PCs for People, which will recycle those to uh, low-income communities. So Again, just trying to be as responsible as possible with the taxpayer dollar. <clears throat> Chris, if we go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, starting that Monday after we had uh, closed the building for the renovations, uh, we provided alternative services at the site. So our bookmobile is on site Monday through Thursday, as well as Saturday. Um, not at the full hours that we've been open um, at North, but still trying to provide something just about every day of the week uh, for those North patrons. Um, it's also, 
as frequently as possible staffed by North employees. So that way the patrons who are there see a familiar face, you know, trying to make it as, uh, you know, convenient and familiar as possible uh, during this, this closure. Um, and we've also added, uh, in addition to holds, printing and fax services. So they have as complete of an experience as possible. You know, it's not the same as being in the building and being able to browse, um, but again, trying to create or maximize those services for them. They can continue to use the book drop access at the location. That'll be the same as it was in the past. And with the ultimate goal of continuing to provide that same level of service at each location during renovation. So uh, trying to bring that bookmobile to each of the six uh, locations that we have uh, scheduled. Chris, if we could bump one more. So just to give you again a little snapshot of the remaining timeline once North is completed, uh, we'll be transitioning to East Canton uh, in June. So there's very little uh, gap there between the two. Um, in fact, both branches will be offline for a short period of time as we try to minimize the, the downtime at each location. We hope to uh, complete construction in August and reopen in September. Uh, Madge, again, we look to close in August, construction through December, and then reopening in January of next year. And then we'll follow a very similar cycle uh, in 2022 with Perry, Dehoff, and Lake. Uh, we're waiting to confirm those dates just based on you know, seeing how these branches go and making sure that we uh, optimize that timeline as well. So that, that's all I have to report, but uh, again, that's, that's a lot in a short win or package there. And again, something that's been a long time coming and something I think the community is uh, really be impressed with when we're done with it. Any very, questions? That's a very, that's a very informative report. Very uh, well, very well structured. Uh, any, any questions for Derek? Derek, I, I think I missed this. So what's the difference between when North is closed and the next one, is there any um, overlap of them being closed at the same time? Uh, slightly. There will be a couple weeks where North and East Canton are offline. So that's one of the, now that we're seeing how the alternative services work at North, we're trying to figure out how we can you know, provide those for both locations at the same time. That is our goal. Um, and we're trying to minimize that as much as possible. Um, North, I can say we've, we've had about two weeks where we were offline at the beginning before construction actually started, um, which was, I think, a really appropriate window. We're seeing if at some of the smaller branches, whether we can maybe shrink that a little bit. Um, and we'll learn at North when we come back online, if, if you know how long that takes to get back online to see if we can shrink that as well. Because you know we don't want to shortchange um, the startup process because we want to make sure it's absolutely right when we open. Um, at the same time, we don't want it to be any longer than we have to uh, so that folks aren't receiving those services. So um, North will be a very informative process for us. Um, but at the moment, there's, there's definitely going to be some overlap where two branches are offline at once, but trying to minimize that window. Thank you. Mm -hmm. any, any other questions for Derek? No? Well, okay, Derek, thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, great, great uh, update. And uh, you indeed have been very busy since uh, you began your work over three years ago at the library. You've done a tremendous job. So for that, we thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, next, we have a capital projects update from Mark. Good afternoon. I was asked to put together a multi-year maintenance plan so I developed a spreadsheet that is multi-year. We With it, we can track where we've been and what our plan for the future is. It is by branch and each has a major topic that I'm tracking, similar to flooring, electrical, painting, HVAC, et cetera. It's a living document where I hope to, as we identify certain areas, if we've got a air handling unit that is going to need replacement and we project it, it's gonna be two or three years out, I can start budgeting that kind of investment. 
most of our emphasis right now is on the main branch um, because that is the building that needs the most attention to the infrastructure. I'm also trying to use this document to dovetail what Derek's doing with his reimagine. Um, prime example would be with the North Branch. I had budgeted redoing the parking lot. It seemed to be an ideal time to shut down and redo the parking lot while the branch was closed so that when it opens up, not only the, the building, but the parking lot is new. So those are how we're trying to dovetail those things in. Back in April of 2013, the library commissioned uh, Welty to do a assessment management plan. Um, I took that plan and tried to use it as a reference document to start building uh, this multi-year maintenance plan. The focus for 2021 is going to be replacing the roof on Maine, starting to replace the fire alarm system at Maine, starting to replace the HVAC uh, computer and programming, and front entrance site work at Maine. The focus for 22 will be doing roof scans at the branches so that we can start assessing uh, some of their structural conditions, start making a major investment in the flooring at Maine, painting, more HVAC controls, and the parking lot at Maine. So that's the, the planning portion of it. What we were actually able to do in 2020 last year, under CARES Act, we spent around $25,000 on acrylic dividers across the system. We were able to replace all the restroom sinks and countertops at Maine. While we were replacing the sinks and countertops, because of COVID, we went to hands-free faucets and flush valves. Um, had to lock out all the drinking fountains across the system, so we purchased uh, covers for the drinking fountains instead of wrapping them in uh, garbage bags. We spent $40,000 in purchasing new electrostatic disinfecting equipment, kind of Ghostbusters. Um, and it's turning out to be a, an excellent uh, product. We were led on to it by our partners over at Lake Schools. Um, We've been using them for about three weeks now. My staff, it's eliminating all the chemicals and cleaning products and disinfecting products that we're currently using. Um, and it's all environmentally friendly. So it appears to be a really a win-win for, for everybody. Um, on the capital front, we started a $75,000 replacement of the automated front entrance doors here at Maine. Um, we can barely keep them on their hinges, let alone being able to lock them. So we're replacing the uh, doors with new sliders. Um, we put, implemented a central inventory pro, uh, process. So we spent quite a bit of time redoing the flooring and cleaning the area out and putting in new shelving. We were able to replace purchased two uh, replacement vans for the price of what we had budgeted for one. And we made some cooling tower repairs. And all those items were uh, identified on the capital plan. And what we weren't able to do because of uh, COVID-19, we uh, deferred a year. So that's what we've been doing in facilities. Mark, that's a, uh, an excellent report. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to hear what you've accomplished, you and your team have accomplished this year, and certainly how you're approaching our future needs. I am very well done. And does any ha anyone have any comments for Mark or questions? 
comments or questions? Hey, Steve, I just wanted to add that um, Mark's uh, planning is going to allow us, uh, the Finance Committee and the Board, to uh, really kind of look forward. And in years past, we've taken a little bit more of a reactive approach towards budgeting and, and capital improvements at our locations. Um, but this will allow us to move into a little bit more of a proactive approach. Um, and I think you guys will see that here at our uh, upcoming Finance Committee meeting. And you'll see a little bit of a different approach towards the budget. Um, which I think will overall uh, be better for both the budget and for the facilities themselves. So um, I, I thank Mark for, uh, you know, making sure that that plan was complete and um, it's really going to help out our budgeting process quite a bit. Like, yes, that's, uh, that, that's going to be great for sure. Any other comments or questions? No? Well, again, thank, thank you very much, Mark. Excellent report. Uh, next, we're moving into the Human Resources Committee report. Do we have anything today? No? Yeah, I did not believe so. I'm sorry, Susan? I was saying the same thing. So. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the table of charges, which is in, on page 15 in your board packet. Chris, uh, will you go through those with us, please? Sure. Um, so the, the resolution is actually, it starts on page 14, and I think it goes all the way through page 16. Um, the actual change is on page 16. Um, there's actually two small changes. The first is just the correction of a spelling error. Thank you, Bob. Uh, we added an O to passport photo. Uh, but the actual change um, is an addition of the final line, which is uh, ILL pass-through fees. Um, so this is interlibrary loan fees. Um, we came across a situation where we needed to obtain some materials from another library. Um, and it was, it was kind of unique where there were some fees we had to pay, but we really didn't have a method to pass those fees onto the patron. Um, and it was for materials that we weren't intending to keep. So we were really uh, facilitating uh, a patron to be able to borrow something from a library that was across the country. Um, and so that's not something that we, you know, we typically just take that charge completely and, and hold that on our own. Um, the patron was willing to pay for the, the cost, but we just didn't really have a method to do that. Um, so this last line really just allows the library, you know, if we were to borrow something from another library and there were shipping and handling fees or different fees, um, it allows us to bill that to the patron uh, if we need to. Um, and again, this is for items that we really don't keep. We're borrowing them from another library. So these are just our costs to borrow something um, and have handling costs in there. Okay. Is this something we need to pass through a resolution? Yeah, this this would need to be a, a resolution, or it is a resolution. Okay, all right. So, uh, any before I ask for a motion to approve, does anybody have any questions or comments? No, then I would ask for a motion to approve. So no, I'm sorry. I'll second. Okay, so, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution passes. Thank you. Do we have any new business to discuss uh, before we move to executive session? No? Uh, then I'd ask for a motion to move to executive session to discuss real estate matters. Belden moves. Second. Second, French. Thank you. We, this is a roll call vote. Sally. Sally. Okay. Susan. Yes. Joe. Yes. Robin? Yes. Bob? Yes. And Steve, yes. Sally, did you join us? Are you, are you there? I'm, yeah, I'm here. I thought I was on. Okay. Did, did you vote to? I voted yes. 